begging for attention. You're gonna die oh, alone no, in no, our no, no, no! Oh, nobody! No! Okay, I'm just gonna get this out of the way and hopefully get back to doing Transformers memes because I had an idea about this on whether Prime should kill or not, but this cheeky bastard beat me to the punch. Welcome Transformers fans to another discussion video, and today I'm going to be doing a response video to the Autobot sight of Jay on Bayverse Optimus murking Decepticons left and right, front and center. And don't worry, this isn't one of those response videos where drama is re revolved around it. This is more of a add-in or a follow-up to his video, with a little dab of my own take on whether Optimus Prime should kill or not. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes here. Everyone knows who Optimus Prime is. Optimus Prime is a wise leader who is seen by many others as a father figure with a code of honor, and even a superhero at that. You know what? Jay says it best here. Optimus Prime is a leader, a father figure, a mentor, an example, an inspiration to all Transformers fans all around the world. We all love him, we all know him, and we all love his presence on the screen. But what if I told you that Michael Bay turned him into a murderer? So Jay explains that Optimus throughout the Michael Bay films has been shown to have violent tendencies and how out of character he is. Throughout the Transformers live action Michael Bay verse, there was a lot of questionable decisions that Optimus made. A lot of frustrating decisions because they're just not true to the character of Optimus Prime that we all know and love. This I definitely agree with. Michael Bay turned everyone's childhood hero into a vicious stone cold killing machine. But that's how franchises are half of the time. They would take an already established popular character and or franchise and do their own personal take on them. Sometimes even ignoring the whole point of why it was popular in the first place. I mean, look at the X-Men films. That has some good and bad films. Look at the video game films. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Look at Resident Evil, for example. The Halo TV series. And let's not forget live-action anime adaptations. The constant Disney remakes and reboots, etc. I said this in my Starscream video, where I talk about wanting characters to be accurate to how they're originally depicted, and portrayed from the source material. I also say it was okay for franchises to change a bit as long as it benefits the plot. I like and dislike parts of the Bayverse even though I grew up with them. I also agree how poorly they written some of the characters. Michael Bay himself said that he's never seen the original cartoon. Much noise was made over Hasbro's cash cow as Hollywood and Michael Bay began the process to, um, adapt the franchise to the silver screen. Because I'm not a first generation Transformers fan. I think I was a I'm little not a fan of them. He was aware about the franchise, but wanted to make them realistic in his way. Next point to bring up is Optimus Prime's murder streaks. And in this video, I'll be speaking of his turn to villainy, which I think truly begins in Transformers Dark of the Moon. In Transformers Dark of the Moon, Optimus is betrayed by his mentor, and I think that Michael Bay's writing after this leads it to believe that this had a mental impact on Optimus Prime, and Optimus Prime may not be able to handle this, because as the film progresses and as we go farther into the series, he becomes more and more vicious and ruthless. And by the end of the film, I think Optimus Prime truly has his turn to villainy, and I think the writing by Michael Bay is so bad in terms of Optimus Prime. I love, absolutely love the Bay films, but I think Optimus Prime was handled so badly to the point where it kind of made him worse than Megatron and kind of a murderer, at least in this depiction of the iconic character. Or maybe this was intended by Michael Bay to show the depths of Optimus Prime and how this mentally impacted him. One of the main things I hear from Bayverse fans is that Optimus is a soldier and give excuses that he's been like this way before he got on Earth and how realistic it is to this character. Which I guess it makes sense, but at the same time, who asked for the Transformers to be realistic? That's like making a Batman movie and then turning him into a psychopath. Do you know how many YouTube videos are talking about how poorly Batman can be written in some aspects? Like the Autobot side of Jay, I love the Bayverse, but when it comes to character development, 
the writers hardly develop most of the Autobots and Decepticons, not even letting their personalities shine on the big screen and give us death to them. He has the opportunity to finally resolve peace, and a lot of people may say, oh, well, Megatron will just eventually come back and go back to war. Well, we have the original ending for Dark of the Moon in a novelization, and it ends peacefully with Megatron going back to Cybertron and the Autobots finding peace on Earth. So if Optimus didn't pull the trigger here and kill Megatron, they would have had perfect peace and there would be no Age of Extinction. There would be no Transformers the last night. But a switch in Optimus' head told him that this was the right move. I dislike how they had to change the ending because the comic spoiled it. They could have kept going and no one would have cared at all. But hey, at least we get to see Optimus rip off Megatron's head Mortal Kombat style. Finish him! Also, no cap, I was one of the defenders for Prime axing off Megatron and thinking how long will the truce last. When we all know that the character of Optimus Prime, killing is the last resort, especially when it comes to Megatron. Optimus Prime, grant me mercy, I beg of you! You, who are without mercy, now plead for it. But he had no second thought, even when he was given the option. He proceeds to viciously kill Megatron, and Megatron is wounded, he cannot do anything. He barely, he's trying to bring up his sh shotgun to blast Optimus away. He can barely do that in the seconds that Optimus gets over there, rips his head off. He chose the most brutal possible way. Now this is something that I wanted to make a video about on whether Prime should kill or not. Let's get this out of the way. Bayverse Optimus is not necessarily a terrible nor a great version of Optimus Prime. Sure, he does show compassion, bravery, great leadership, and has those wonderful speeches that can inspire you. He kills Decepticons left and right in cool and brutal ways. Personally, I don't think the problem is Optimus Prime killing. I believe it's the way how he acts when it comes to killing. Because I too believe killing is a last resort to a certain extent. Personally, I believe the concept of defending yourself, the ones closer to you, or even to save something greater, like your country or even a planet. There are plenty of instances where Optimus has killed before and is not seen as a murderer. Look at the War for Cybertron games and Transformers Prime cartoon. But in the Bayverse, Optimus has done some questionable things, like executing a crippled helpless Decepticon, screaming give me your face as he rips their faceplate off, including killing a human for understandable reasons. The fights are cool and spectacular, but this is not Optimus Prime's style. I enjoyed the films like any Bayverse fan would. I even liked some of his cheesy humor half the time, because I grew up with the franchise. No, there's nothing wrong with heroes killing their enemies, but having an iconic character like Optimus brutally kill his opponents is the equivalent of Batman using his guns to kill his rose gallery even though he has used guns before way before his illogical no killing rule. Don't worry, this will be important later on. Bayverse fans like me and Jay love these films, but the way how they portray this character is a bit of a disservice to Peter Cullen. I had to say lines that uh, I would, I, I, I believed in the character. I believed in it, and uh, if I was asked to say a line uh, that was just not Optimus Prime, you know, uh, I would say I I really don't want to read that line. I, I, it, it, yeah, I don't think he'd say that. And there was only one director that ever told me, he said, well, just say it anyway, I, 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 I want to have it, I want to have it. I, I just don't feel comfortable. So, well, listen, uh, just read the line. I said, okay, okay, I'll read it. And it's just not Optimus, you know? It wasn't Optimus. I'll kill them all. You know, that's not Optimus, you know? That's it. Yeah. <laughs>
I feel like this is one of those instances where people think that heroes should never kill the villain under any circumstances, and I hate the idea behind it. I'm not sorry, but if there's a point where there's a big threat, you need to take care of it. Besides, in the world of the Transformers, this is war, where it's a kill or be killed situation. I'm not saying that heroes should definitely kill an enemy straight up even if they surrender, or if they're beyond weak to the point they need help. But some people need to understand that heroes do and will have to kill sometimes. That is that is what we call situational irony. In order to get the pieces we need to create fire, we got to go underwater. That's cool. Uh, do you think heroes should kill villains like the Joker, Reverse Flash, Darkseid, or any villain that kills a shit ton of people? Yes. Yes. Uh, most heroes... Maybe I shouldn't say most. A lot of heroes kill, okay? I'm going to go off on a very small tangent here, okay? When you look at the history of the hero, it's only relatively recent that heroes didn't kill. Look at any sort of fiction, and again, I'm an atheist, so I'm speaking from an atheistic perspective, okay? When you look at religious texts, the heroes in these texts from Greek to uh, Judeo-Christian to Abrahamic, any Abrahamic religion, they kill, and they are the heroes. Hercules had to kill the Nemean lion. You know? God killed a shit ton of people in the flood. <laughs> Killing is, is, a, is a part of being a hero. Because sometimes you have to put down the evil. You have to put them down permanently. Okay? Star Wars. The heroes kill. You might argue that Han Solo is an anti-hero, but still a hero, right? Do you think those lasers aren't killing motherfuckers? He's killing motherfuckers. They're killing. Luke Skywalker. They, it, like, they kill, okay? Um... Punisher, anti-hero, absolutely, killer. A uh, shit ton of comic book characters. Iron Man, Iron Man is a killer. Uh, Captain America, literally uses guns. You think those guns he, that he's shooting are shooting stun pellets? No, them is bullets. He's killing motherfuckers. Well, the MCU movies, actually, he was using a gun. <laughs> Captain America kills. Heroes have killed. So when people ask the question like, oh, hey, you know, should these characters kill? They absolutely already do. So it's not, it's not like I'm shocked when it's shown on screen or in a book. It's a part of the hero's journey sometimes. Harry Potter literally killed Voldemort. They kill. Heroes in fiction and in real life have killed in order to save or defend. If you think heroes pulling their punches will solve everything, you either don't understand how the bigger picture is or how it works at all. Heroes are portrayed as something to be inspired by and look up to. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to fiction, you start seeing the cracks behind it. One of the many flaws about not taking care of the villains, including how much of a threat they pose, is that sometimes when heroes face villains countless times, they are both considered to be a liability to society. I dislike it when heroes can kill random henchmen, but when it comes to the main boss, they back down, and that sometimes pisses me off. There were moments in Transformers Prime where Optimus wanted to put it into Megatron, but coincidence seems to not be in his favor. I even hate it when villains like Joker, Reverse Flash, Darkseid, Kingpin, or even Carnage can get their ass kicked numerous times and as predictable, the heroes just decide not to kill them right on the spot. You know your problem, Optimus? For such a big, strong bot, you're soft. You didn't pound Megatron into scrap when you had the chance! Many chances, in fact! Sometimes the heroes think about the villain's life more than the people they're supposed to protect. And before anyone says, villains can change, they can be redeemed, I have no problem with that. Hell, there are plenty of instances where characters have been villains and they end up being good guys or anti-villains and it really works out for the character. This may be irrelevant, but this feels like a similar situation where Batman fans have a problem with him using guns or defending his insane logic of his no-kill rule, 
even though that he's killed plenty of people way before that rule. Here's a video about whether heroes should kill or not by Classic Man D. And just to let you guys know, I disliked Batman way before I seen this guy. I've been seeing this topic a lot lately and I feel like a lot of people are forgetting what heroes are supposed to do. See, when you are picking up the mantle to become a superhero, you must do everything in your power to save everyone. The moment you decide to become a hero, you bear the responsibility of asking yourself, did I do everything I possibly could to save these people and to prevent the problem from happening again? People consistently try to use Spider-Man as an excuse to say, hey, if Batman's not killing, why not get on Spider-Man? The difference is primary universe Batman is not willing to kill. The difference being is that Spider-Man is willing to and will do anything it takes for him to save people's lives. Take into account the time when he fought Craven's family. He absolutely brutalized their entire family that whole night. And he fully intended to wipe that man off the face of the earth. He let Craven live because the threat was neutralized and the intent to kill that night proved that Craven was never gonna fight him ever again because Craven didn't believe he had that in him. Take the time when Spider-Man actually made a suit to kill a being mixed with him and Deadpool DNA. Another instance where Spider-Man fully goes out intending to kill a villain to save everyone. One. But the thing is, even this time he doesn't do it because Deadpool disguised as him does this because he's trying to show to Spider-Man that he is not right for this path even though it was the right thing to do to get rid of Itsy Bitsy. Because the action of taking her out specifically was a plan of Mephisto to corrupt Spider-Man's soul. Because the only difference with this instance is that he wasn't just doing it for righteousness, he was doing it for revenge. If Aunt May had died the night Kingpin took a hit out on her, he would have full intention of killing Kingpin. But at the end of the day, Kingpin is still just a man, you take away his money, you take away his influence and then shame him, he has nothing. People love to bring up Carnage, and while I do think Carnage should be slaughtered on the spot, like Comics Related said, he is nowhere near the threat that Joker is. But again, out of all of Spider-Man's villains, he is the only one who really needs to die. But trust me, it's not from lack of trying, you just can't kill Carnage like that. But the difference is, is that Joker, for all intents and purposes, is a normal human being. And then this is also a being who was unchecked enough to where he could actually end the entire universe and kill everyone in it. And then one of the most emotional scenes in animated history is the epitome of Batman's moronic stupidity. Honestly, imagine if a superhero raised you, trained you, and showed you truth, justice, and the way of life, and he told you that's what we operate from. Continues to let a serial killer live because of the fact that it's too easy to kill him because of the fact that if you do, he wins in the end. I allow myself to go down into that place. I'll never come back. All I hear is you have no self-control. Even when this man possibly cut off the faces of his entire family, this dude still said it's because you'd win. That's why I never do it. I could never support a superhero who would actually laugh with a genocidal maniac who just that day brutalized another member of his family and paralyzed and assaulted them. Honestly, if some of their conversations were actually broadcast and recorded, they would hate Batman just as much as they hate the Joker. Take All Might, for example, the pinnacle of peace and justice. All Might got a grievous injury thinking that he killed All for One in their last encounter. Say that this last hit was the final hit that he needed to kill all for one publicly. Public would not look at him differently and he did his job. I'm not saying that all villains that do petty crimes or even commit murder one time need to die. I'm saying that villains with the highest body count continue to live, escape numerous times, and continue with the same needless destructions are the ones that need to be put down permanently. Because letting the villains live countless times creates a vicious and never-ending cycle thinking that people can change when some of the villains just choose to do evil shit. Apologize for the off-topic side point, but I needed those references to make a valid argument. Now, I want to continue on with Jay's video. He proceeds to viciously kill Megatron, and Megatron is wounded, he cannot do anything. He barely, he's trying to bring up his sh shotgun to blast Optimus away. He can barely do that in the seconds that Optimus gets over there, rips his head off chose the most brutal possible way. Optimus enjoyed this. Optimus is a murderer. Oh no, he was a certified murderer once he straight up executed a crippled Decepticon. And for the one saying, but Demolisher killed lots of people. Okay, but he's crippled. He's not a threat anymore. Optimus as a character would never execute a down or injure enemy. That's not part of his character. You could say, well this Optimus does, yeah, but that's Michael Bay's Optimus Prime, not the Optimus we all know and love. Now the common accusation is that noble hero Optimus does not show mercy and instead seems to enjoy killing. Now before we get into the nitty gritty, we need to ask ourselves, has Optimus been viewed as merciful in most of the other countless incarnations? No more Optimus Prime! Grant me mercy, I beg of you! You are without mercy. 
mercy. Now plead for it. Don't go and try. Why are you doing this? Never mind. We've got enough to worry about. Let me go and Unicron will be destroyed. I can't do that. What are you waiting for, Autobot? Finish me. That would be the easy way out, Megatron. You don't deserve it. Well, yes. Yes, he has. And in the following films, Optimus Prime says a lot of suspicious things. I'll kill you! What did you just say? These are not things that Optimus Prime should be saying. These are not Optimus Prime would be saying if this was the true character that we all know and love. But Michael Bay turned Optimus Prime into a murderer. When you really add up the body counts between Megatron and Optimus Prime in the Bayverse, Optimus has killed more Decepticons than Megatron has killed Autobots or Cybertronians in general. I definitely agree here. This is a weird way how you think about the face collector. He's been catching more bodies than Jeffrey Dahmer and Megs have been treated like a second class villain. The only characters he had killed so far was a random Cybertronian, Jazz, and one human. And the fact that Michael Bay turned him into this vicious murderer is absolutely crazy. And the fact that we were just dealing with it and being like, oh yeah, I still love this. And I, and I still love the Bay films. I always will love the Bay films. But... Optimus is a murderer and that's that's so untrue to the character and it's really frustrating. I understand and completely agree with that, but I personally believe it's okay for Prime to kill if it means to save someone. However, I do not believe it's okay for Prime to scream Any last words not today. Give me your faith. You you defend my family or die. I'll kill you. What have you done to my home? <laughs> Now I want to go through Optimus Prime's kills and depict how some of them can be valid while others can be seen as very sussy. Optimus killing Bone Crusher. That is valid. He was causing collateral damage and kept attacking Optimus. And Prime was simply defending himself. Optimus killing Demolisher. Again, I understand what Demolisher did. No one is denying that. But that's not okay to execute a crippled enemy who is obviously helpless. You can argue and say that he nearly did it with Megatron and Transformers Prime. But the thing is, he thought about it even when he was pointing his gun at him. Even when he was surrounded by Dreadwing and his whole army of cons. He was being merciful when he let him live. But what Beavis Prime did was some gangster shit. The fallen shall rise again. Not today. Grindor. This is completely valid. He, Megatron, and Starscream tried to jump him. Then when Prime fights back, Grindor continues to fight and attack him. After Prime kicks Megatron and Screamer to the curb, Grinder thought it was a good idea to go after him until he got hooked in the optic and had his face ripped off while begging for his life. Grinder decided to poke the bear and got mauled for it. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. The Fallen. Obviously this is valid, although the way how he handled it was way too excessive. Saying psychotic stuff like... Then proceeds to tear off his face as if he was Overlord from IDW. Then fits him from the back... Ah! Through his chest, and then crushes Spark. I understand he's a big threat, I said it before. But the way how he handled it was over the top. Uh, I rise. You fall. The 
body shot of Optimus Prime killing a bunch of cons in Dark of the Moon. This is valid. He's trying to save Earth and its inhabitants. Optimus killing Shockwave. This can be understandable if the comics even count, even though they contradict the movies. Shockwave killed a whole bunch of Autobots, including Jolt and Optimus' girlfriend, Alita One. I guess that's why he was acting aggressive and said, you die. Yeah. Optimus killing Megatron. This can be debatable to some people. Both are injured, but Megatron offered a truce to Optimus, which can be seen as a bit sussy, considering he did say, He could have told Megatron to surrender, drop the shoddy, or even let Megatron go, but he didn't. Remember, in the original ending of Dark of the Moon, it was supposed to be like the novel, but got completely changed because the novel spoiled the ending, which makes no sense for Michael Bay to do. Optimus could have let Megatron live, but it was never meant to be, and Prime killed Megas with a fatality. Sentinel Prime. I denounce, I repudiate, and condemn him. Basically, fuck him. No, Optimus! Cemetery win. This is self-defense without a doubt. There was no argument in that. Plus, they knew they was getting themselves into. Also, they killed Ratchet and Leadfoot. After they saved the planet from the Decepticons, you don't attack the hand that feeds you. The KSI drones. Yes, this was completely valid. Although it was unnecessary for him to shout, I'll kill you! He could have just killed the drones and moved on. It was even more unnecessary considering that most of the KSI drones could have been his friends. Sure! Harold Attinger. Okay, this is a bit of a mixed bag because Optimus did say he would kill the man responsible for killing his comrades. Dude was basically the one that orchestrated the whole Black Ops operation, going after every Cybertronian. And let's be real here, can you blame Prime after being betrayed yet again, but this time by the people he was sworn to protect? Don't get me wrong, Attinger's motive was understandable wanting to prevent another Autobots vs Decepticon conflict while humans get caught in the crossfire. There are no good aliens or bad aliens, Jaeger. Although he did thought it was a good idea to use Optimus Prime's dead friends to rebuild them into drones for the US Army. So, all I can say is I don't blame him. I don't approve nor disapprove. I just don't blame him. It's just us and them, and you chose them. Anytime. Lockdown. Yes, this was obviously to save Kate Yeager from being shish kebab. Plus, he didn't act psychotic this time. Oh, and how can we forget that he and the rest of Cemetery Win completely massacred Ratchet and Leadfoot? Now, I will not be counting Nemesis Prime because Optimus were being under mind control. So let's just skip on to the rest of the kills. Infernicus slash the Infernicons. This is valid. They are preventing the Autobots and the humans from saving Earth. Optimus has killed enemies before that tried to prevent him from reaching the objective. I am Optimus Prime. And those are my personal opinions on whether I find Optimus having valid and unnecessary reasons for him to kill. Apologies for the long side conversation, but I thought it would be interesting to explore on. Now, on to Jay's video. Honestly, Michael Bay really butchered Optimus as a character. He butchered Megatron too. He butchered the dynamic between Optimus and Megatron. As much as I love the Bavers, I absolutely love the Bavers. It's so frustrating the way that Megatron and Optimus were handled. Both were butchered. He almost swapped the characters 
but gave them their normal trait. Megatron was evil, but he didn't have the spite. He didn't have the kills. He didn't have the wrath, r wrath to have that intimidation. Optimus Prime was heroic. He gave his speeches, but he didn't have the compassion, the love, the soldier spirit, the hope. He did not have those things. Optimus was turned into a monster, a murderer in the Bayverse, and it, it's just extremely frustrating because I will love this version of Optimus forever, but it's disappointing for us who grew up with the Bayverse and the, the Bayverse was our introduction into Transformers. It sucks that when you look back, you see that you were actually looking up to and loving and being inspired by a crazy, psychopathic, ruthless murderer. But yeah, that's the video. Optimus Prime is a murderer in the Bayverse, and I just wanted to reflect on this and talk about it and discuss it and bring up the things that point to the fact that he is a murderer, or maybe he's just mentally unstable, and this was a key thing that Michael Bay wanted to implement, but I just want to make this quick Halloween special talking about Optimus Prime, and I thought that this topic was perfect for Halloween in a perfect style Halloween video, so thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing, amazing Halloween. Uh, go, uh, whatever you're doing, giving out candy, going trick or treating, whatever you're doing, just have fun, have an amazing night, and yeah, have a say, buddy. Peace. This is mostly true, but, and I dislike saying this, but if we never been introduced to Bayvers Optimus, we would have never known about the multiple incarnations of Optimus Prime and various Transformers media, like the video games, the great score, pure action. We never would have bought those cool toys with the gimmicks and electronic sounds and lights. The way how I look at it and come to accept is that this is a completely different take and or interpretation on Optimus Prime, just like the whole Transformers franchise. The Michael Bay films has given us action at the cost of character development. This may be just me, but there is a lack of remorse when it comes to Optimus Prime's closet full of cons. And I get it, he's a leader and a warrior that has been through eons murking cons, but this is something that the films could have expanded on and would have been an interesting concept to go by. Optimus can go through the mental challenges exploring his character on killing Decepticons while he shows how remorseful he is when killing his fellow brothers and sisters and wishing all the countless deaths could have been handled very differently despite the hard choices he faces, sometimes even wondering what life could have been like for all the Cybertronians to live in peace. He can even have a pep talk with one of the humans, possibly Lennox, on what would it be like if war never existed, why things had to end up horribly, horribly on both sides. They can exchange meaningful messages about life, death, and what it means to be a hero. Something similar when Optimus and Kate talks about humanity and their mistakes. And it's unfortunate that they never got around it because there were good opportunities to expand on that subject. To be frank here, one of the biggest complaints and criticisms about Optimus Prime from the Bayverse is that he is incredibly violent while exposing his psychotic tendencies and barely shows any mercy. He is different compared to how he was originally meant to be portrayed as. Optimus Prime in general is an archetype that is full of hope, goodness, courage, leadership, and wisdom, while also being grounded. I'm not saying Optimus is a flawless character because he does have some slip-ups, but he is a well-thought-out character. Every time we consume all medias of Optimus Prime, we will always love him. Optimus is a heroic character that kids look up to like Batman, Superman, Goku, Jojo, Naruto, Captain America, Luke Skywalker, etc. This kind of proves that Optimus Prime in the movies has more of a inclination to kill. But one of the biggest criticisms comes when Optimus Prime kills both Sentinel Prime and Demolisher. <laughs> It's the most brutal thing ever. But Retrohead, it's a war. But Retrohead, he can't trust him. But Retrohead, he had to do it. Yeah. Sometimes people forget that Optimus Prime is not real. Optimus was not making decisions in this movie. He didn't decide shit. He did. Plus, Bay's Optimus lacks some of the things that makes him an archetypal hero. An idealistic hero stays true to his moral values, even if 
that means disadvantaging himself and the others around him. Bay's Optimus is perhaps more practical, but in doing so, he becomes less of a hero and more of a cold-hearted Machiavelli. Allegedly in the novelization of Dark of the Moon, Megatron and Optimus come to a mutual agreement, ending the war and Megatron leaves for Cybertron. Apparently Michael Bay threw this out thinking it would be better for Optimus Prime to be an axe murderer. But Retrohead! Okay, 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 okay. If literary comparisons aren't enough for you, let's look back at the history. Let's look at the Geneva Conventions. The Geneva Convention is perfect to compare to the Transformers series. It's a global law, and it outlines humane conduct in war. Article 6 of the convention states, Wounded or sick combatants, to wherever nation they may belong, shall be collected and cared for. Later conventions will get more specific. Additional Protocol 1, Article 41, laid out in 1977, defines anyone that has been rendered unconscious or is otherwise incapacitated by wounds or sickness and therefore is incapable of defending himself is hors de combat and shall not be attacked. Statutes in both the Hague Regulations and the International Criminal Court defined wounding or killing the incapacitated as a serious war crime. <laughs> Both Demolisher and Sentinel Prime are unable to continue fighting. Killing them literally makes Optimus Prime a war criminal by real world standards. Hearing and seeing your favorite characters act like psychopaths before killing them is something you would never expect them to do. Optimus is a wonderful role model for everyone, including adults. He's comparable to Superman. But Baver's Optimus isn't completely deranged. He's a character that has flaws, but he also has qualities as well, compared to the portrayal of his other counterparts. He does show honor among the humans. Will you leave peacefully? Freedom is your right. If you make that request, we will honor it. And he would sacrifice himself in order to save others as well. I know I said Optimus is not necessarily a terrible nor a great version of Optimus. He's someone else's Optimus with a dab of ruthlessness. Movie Optimus is a leader that has taken to a realistic perspective of war where anything goes while death can be inevitable. And Prime had to do what was necessary as the Decepticons caused a lot of, and I mean a lot of casualties. I honestly felt that if they wanted to, they could have made Prime peaceful but slowly start to realize and understand that it's time to put on the big boy boots and do what is necessary like Transformers Prime. I have been foolish not to see what history has proven over and over again that Autobots and Decepticons will never mend their ways if there can be no diplomatic solution to this perpetual conflict then I must not allow more darkness to fall upon this or any planet. Megatron must be destroyed. We can all say that this is Optimus or whether that this is not Optimus until the heat death of the universe. But these are things where on how things are viewed by the audience, some are going to like it and others aren't going to like it. Then again, who knows? You don't have to agree with what I'm saying. You have your own perspective on whether it's okay for Prime to kill or not. I'm just sharing my own thoughts on what I think of his character. The Babers is something of a guilty pleasure for those that grew up with the film series, and some of us aren't ashamed to admit how we feel about it despite its flaws. We can all like and enjoy something while also criticizing the films for something that could have been better. But hey, liking something is a matter of perspective. Well, that's all I got for you today. I'm glad I get to do this, and hopefully more of you guys can actually enjoy it just as much as I did. I'm even more glad that the Autobot Saito J brought this topic up because I didn't know exactly how I would go with this. Until next time, be sure to hit that sub button for me and be sure to subscribe to the Autobot Saito J because he's doing way better than me. Now, I gotta get back to doing Transformers memes. Be sure to stay groovy, y'all. Until next time.
give the video a like, give the video a shout out, above all, give the channel a groovy subscriber.